Um, could you just first of all um, explain a little bit about the campaign that Epilepsy Action are working on at the moment, Rebecca? Yeah, sure. So we're using the fact it's National Epilepsy Week this week to launch a campaign which is all around first, you know, like first aid, but first aid at its, at its simplest, really, to sort of get the public to understand what epilepsy is and how they can actually help people who have epilepsy feel more comfortable when they're out and about and using public spaces. Um, and because you, you can see from the research that we've done that a lot of people with epilepsy do not feel that they're supported when they go out. Evan, can you um, just talk a little bit about your experience and how a campaign like this is going to help you? Well, um, the campaign is really, really useful. Uh, one of the things that I've from my own experience that I've found is that people often don't feel empowered in order to help a person who's having um, a tonic-clonic seizure or the showbiz seizure, as I call them. It's often the one that people know, feel that they know the most about because they've seen it in um, on, the, on the television or in films or uh, in the media. But they don't feel as if they know what what to do other than to ring 999. Um, the way in which this campaign really works and the strengths of it is that um, people ha have different types of seizures and they're presented different ways. And the simplicity of this campaign is that it empowers people to know what to do regardless of what is happening to the person who's actually having the seizure it's incredibly adaptable and the simplicity of it means that you um, can feel as if you're able to offer as much or as little help as you feel able to do a lot of people um, their in initial actions are either to feel panicked and not do anything or to their panic actually, um, they go into a state where they do something which is not really advisable, which is to sort of um, attempt to restrain the person or to um, move them into the recovery position before they're ready or to do things that may cause more harm than good. And this campaign really um, is adaptable and allows people to take a beat to sort of to breathe into actually providing the first aid that um, a person is able to provide. If this information had been available in some of the situations that you faced in public, what kind of difference would it have made to you? Well, um, one of the instances that I've had was I have actually had a seizure whilst I was on uh, public transport. I was on a bus um, where I volunteer at an art gallery in Sheffield. I find that um, sort of cultural spaces to be quite soothing for my social anxiety. So I finished at about 5 p.m. I got the bus, I get the bus home because I'm not able to drive. I um, got on the bus, I had a seizure. I was um, unfortunately incontinent and as a result of that the bus driver thought that I was drunk and um, physically grabbed hold of my um, arm and my shoulder and made to move me off of the bus and um, held abuse at me and the people on the bus again they felt exactly the same there was no one there to intervene they thought that the same as the bus driver that I was either drunk or on drugs and the bus driver dragged me onto the pavement and left me at the bus stop and then drove away and actually I was in an incredibly vulnerable state I needed the I needed help and after a seizure my um, my voice becomes incredibly slurred as a result of my brain having to knit itself back together and again, this was 
interpreted as me sort of slurring as a result of being inebriated, which is incre- <laughs> incredibly far away from the truth. But again, I it's difficult to interpret that. But I do have um, information on my phone that I was trying to communicate with the bus driver that I actually was in need of assistance. But had this information been available and readily accessible at the time, perhaps it would have triggered in the bus driver's mind the fact that actually, again, it is about that taking taking a beat, taking that time to assess. And again, the person may not have had the capacity to be able to do an awful lot, but just taking that time in order to reassure people that they're going to be okay rather than taking the violent action that they did at the time would have made a hell of a lot of a hell of a lot of difference i'm lucky in that that um someone at the bus stop once i come round a little bit more rang for an ambulance and i was assessed and um discharged back home because i'm an epileptic which is usually what happens unless something incredibly bad goes wrong uh, or i have multiple seizures i very rarely go into hospital in order to have assessment i usually have one seizure it's assessed by a paramedic and i go back home in order to rest it off but again it's a case of making that information available. And this campaign is incredibly important in getting that information to as many people as possible. Obviously, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, it does sound like something obviously you never want to have happen again. What were your kind of initial thoughts after that had happened? Were you Did you seek help straight away? Did you go to Epilepsy Action and talk it through? Or, or what, what did you do? Um, epilepsy action uh, really good in that they help they work with uh, the NHS in order to set up epilepsy nursing teams and uh, training for epilepsy nursing teams and specialist uh, counseling and liaison officers so I contacted my epilepsy nursing team uh, with the help of epilepsy action in order to talk through uh, the trauma that I had gone through um, it did obviously impact my ability to want to go out into society and I have I do still suffer with social anxiety associated with wanting to go out in public I still speak to a therapist about that and it's something that I carry with me every day but switching my mindset to one of being a burden to one of realizing that everybody has a bad day is something that is taking time, but it's the mindset that I choose to carry with me. The fact that everybody has instances where bad things happen. It's how you personally take yourself out into the world that makes up 50%. And the other 50% is things like this, it's education and hoping that someone extends a hand in order to help you if you are in that vulnerable state. I'm going to assume incidences like this aren't isolated. Um, Just from your involvement with other people within the epilepsy community, Evan, and your involvement working for Epilepsy Action, Rebecca, um, how how needed are, are these initiatives? Like, How often do these sorts of things happen, do you think? So, I mean, this this latest um, survey that we we conducted with with people with epilepsy obviously came up with some really scary statistics. You know, like just under ten percent telling us that during a seizure in a public space, you know, they'd either been laughed at, filmed, assaulted, and even had things stolen. That's really scary to hear. You know, even for us, and we hear these stories day in day out, um, and that's kind of backed up by the fact that we keep getting told by by people um, with epilepsy that they want us to help raise awareness with the public 
it's it's less about us helping them with their condition and more about them saying if you can at least get the public to understand that this is something that they can support us with we'll have a better um, standard of life and so that's why we keep bringing up this you know subject and trying to push this campaign thank you so much just really quickly can you briefly outline um the key steps that people need to follow in the campaign if they do see someone having a seizure yeah, so four steps. So thinking about care, and as I said, there's a, there's a brilliant video on our website if you search for Epilepsy Action, but the four steps are, the C stands for comfort, so make sure that anyone that's having a seizure is in a comfortable position in their cushioning their head. The second one is action, so it's all about timing the seizure in any way that you possibly can, um, and also looking for any information that that person might have on them um, to tell you, um, you know, how to help them. So Evan was talking about he had something on his phone, people have lanyards, bracelets, something in their bag. Look for that because if people have regular seizures, they will have something with them. Um, the third one is reassure. We're not asking people to restrain or resuscitate or do anything else. We just want people to sit next to that person and talk to them so that when they regain consciousness, they feel safe and they know where they are. And then the final one is the E is for emergency. So if it goes on longer than five minutes, if it goes into a second seizure, or if for any reason you think this might be someone's first seizure, that's when you call the ambulance. And if people do that, it'll be so much easier for everyone with epilepsy.